Hello, and welcome to my OpenTK platform tutorials. My name is Sil, and in these tutorials I will be teaching you how to make a grid-based 2D platformer in OpenTK. We will be working in C-sharp with Visual Studios as our IDE, and we will be using OpenTK as our interface with OpenGL. So to get things started, you're going to want to download Visual Studios and OpenTK if you don't have them already. For Visual Studios, you're going to want to follow the link in the description. If you want to use the same version that I'm using, I am using Express 2013 for Windows Desktop. You don't have to use this version specifically. Any version of Visual Studios that works with C-sharp should work relatively the same. To download Visual Studios, go ahead and click the Download button here, and click Express 2013 for Windows Desktop, and it'll give you an EXE that will help you install Visual Studios. It most likely will ask you to restart your computer at the end as well. For OpenTK, you're going to want to go to OpenTK.com and click on Download OpenTK and this will bring you to a SourceForge page that will automatically start downloading the installer for OpenTK. One thing to know about OpenTK setup is that the destination folder is something that you're going to want to remember. It defaults to your documents folder, however I usually don't like that because it's different for every person and it's quite a long directory there. So normally what I do is I make an OpenTK folder right in my C drive and install it there. However you can install it wherever you want, just make sure you remember exactly where it's installed. Once OpenTK is installed, you should have something similar to this in the directory that you asked it to install into. In these tutorials, we're mainly going to be focusing on the binaries folder in OpenTK and release with OpenTK.dll. If you have any trouble installing Visual Studios or OpenTK, there are many great tutorials that will guide you through exactly how to install those. However, in these tutorials, I'm going to focus on learning OpenTK and guiding you through how to set up a 2D engine that we can work and make games in. Now that Visual Studios is installed, you're going to want to open that up. It may not appear under Visual Studios, and if you try and search for it, that's because it actually puts it under VS Express. And I'm going to be using the 2013 version. Once Visual Studios opens, you should get a screen like this. And we're going to go ahead and open a new project. So we're going to go File, New Project. We're going to choose a console application name the console application. I'm going to be naming mine OpenTK Platformer. And make sure you choose a directory that you want to put this project in. I'm going to be putting mine in the tutorials folder I already have set up. And go ahead and click OK. And Visual Studios will create a solution with one project in it for us. Before we can do anything with OpenTK we do have to put it as a reference in our project so I'll go ahead and right click on references click Add Reference, and over on the left side you're going to, want to click in the Browse section, click Browse at the bottom, and then you're going to want to browse to that folder that you installed OpenTK into, and you're going to want to go into the Binaries folder, OpenTK Release, and click on OpenTK.dll, and that will add it here with a checkbox on the left, and while we're here one thing we do need to add as well is System.Drawing, so we're going to go to Assemblies on the left side, and in the top right in the search box we're going to type draw and that should give us system.drawing here you're going to want to check the box next to it and then click OK now as you can see we added OpenTK and system.drawing in our references and we should be good to go to use OpenTK so over on the left side here we're going to do a simple program to test that it's working in the program.cs we're going to do using OpenTK And then in our main function, we're going to initiate a game window. Call it window equals new game window. And we'll make it 640 by 480. And then in order to run that window, we're going to call window.run. And that calls a run function in the game window class, which initiates the game loop for us. Game window is going to be handling the whole game loop and frame rate. So we're going to go ahead and click start. And now we have a game window. As you can see, it isn't refreshing because we haven't told it to yet, and we'll get to that in later tutorials. But this is an active game window, it hasn't frozen or anything, and it does have a game loop and a draw function being called, even though the draw function isn't doing anything. So you can go ahead and exit out of that, and that will conclude this part of the tutorial. If I went a little too fast for you, I do recommend following another tutorial. As I said, these tutorials are going to focus more on the programming side of it. These first tutorials is less about teaching you how to install these programs and more about making sure that we're on the same page when we start these tutorials. And hope to see you in the next part.